Hey everyone, I am Anusha and you are welcome to Law Minds. Today I will be discussing about customs as a source of law. So first of all, what do we mean by law? I think everybody must be knowing it. That it is a set of rules that are created and are enforceable by social or governmental institution to regulate behaviors. According to the constitution, law includes ordinance, orders, bylaws, rules, regulations, notifications, customs or usage having the force of law. So now let's move to what are the sources of law means from where does the law originate. The sources are custom, which we will be discussing broadly today in this video, precedent, that is the judicial precedents refer to the decisions given by courts in different cases. A judicial decision has a legal principle that is binding on the subordinate courts. Once a court has delivered a judgment on a particular case, the court subordinate to it must abide by the precedent while deciding on similar cases with similar facts. Some of the most influential judicial precedents in India are uh, like Keswanand Bharti versus the state of Kerala. And the next source of law is legislation. So, it refers to the rules or laws enacted by the legislative organ of the government. It is one of the most important source of law. The word legislation is derived from the word legis and latum, where legis means law and latum means making. Now, let's move to our main topic that is custom. So, what does it mean? How it is a source of law? Custom can simply be explained as those along established practices or unwritten rules that have acquired binding or obligatory character. A custom to be valid must be absorbed continuously for a long time without any interruption. Further, a practice must be supported not only for a long time but it must also be supported by the opinion of the general public and morality. However, every custom need not become law. Uh, like for example, uh, the Hindu Marriage Act of 1955 prohibits marriages that are within the prohibited degrees of relationship. However, the act still permits marriages within the prohibited degree of relationship if there is a proven custom within a certain community. A example of custom is Saptapadi that it is a most important right of Hindu marriage ceremony. The word Saptapadi means seven steps. After tying the Mangal Sutra, the newly wed couple take seven steps around the holy fire which is called as Saptapadi. The customary practice of Saptapati has been incorporated in Section 7 of the Hindu Marriage Act 1955. You can check it. Now let's move to the types of customs. There are basically two types of custom. That is custom without sanctions and custom with sanctions. Custom without sanction are a kinds of customs that are non non-obligatory in nature and are followed because of the public opinion. Custom with sanction are the custom that are binding in nature and are enforced by the state. This custom may further be divided into legal custom and conventional custom. Legal custom is a custom whose authority is absolute. It possesses the force of law. It is recognized and enforced by the courts. Then it is further divided into two types that is general custom and local custom. General custom are the custom that prevails throughout the territory of the state and the local 
customs are applicable to a part of state or a particular region of a country. Now moving to the towards conventional custom. They are also binding on the parties to an agreement where two or more persons enter into an agreement related to trade. It is presumed in law that they make the contract in accordance with established convention or usage of that trade. So this was the types of custom. Now let's move to the essentials of valid customs. Essentials of valid custom are antiquity, continuous, exercised as matter of right, reasonableness, morality, status concerning. Now let's discuss this in more broad way. Antiquity, in order to be legally valid custom, Valid custom should have been in existence for a long time, even beyond human memory. Continuous, that means a custom to be valid should have been in continuous practice. It must have been enjoyed without any kind of interruption. Long intervals and disrupted practice of a custom raise doubts about the validity of the same. Exercised as a matter of right. Custom must be enjoyed openly and without the knowledge of the community. It should not have been practiced secretly. A custom must be proved to be a matter of right. Next comes the reasonableness. Custom must conform to the norms of justice and public utility. A custom to be valid should be based on rationality and the reason if a custom is likely to cause more inconvenience and mischief than convenience, such a custom will not be valid. Then comes the morality. Custom that is immoral or opposed to public policy cannot be a valid custom. Courts have decided many customs as invalid as they were practiced for immoral purposes or were opposed to public policy. Status concerning. In any modern state, when new legislation is enacted, it is generally preferred to the custom. Therefore, it is imperative that a custom must not be opposed or contrary to legislation. Like, for instance, uh, the customary practice of child marriage has been declared as an offense. Similarly, adoption laws have been changed by legislation in India. So, this was about the custom as a source of law. Thank you.